It has been a couple of weeks since RTX 4090 graphics cards launched and so far I managed to test five different models and even though it is already well known what to expect from the 4090 chip itself, I thought it would just be a good idea to see how these five different cards compare to each other uh, when it comes to performance, when it comes to thermals, when it comes to noise and all the different features they offer. So let's begin! This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high-quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12 volt high power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there and as a nice bonus you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Right here I have five different RTX 4090 cards. I have the Founders Edition from Nvidia, the Strix card from ROG, the Gaming OC from Gigabyte and Air Cooled as well as Liquid Cooled Supreme X from MSI. And one thing all these cards have in common is their size. They are absolutely massive. Now the Founders Edition is the most compact one but it is still very large compared to previous generations. It is just over 30 centimeters long and almost 14 centimeters deep. The air-cooled MSI Supreme X is a bit longer, standing at 33.5 centimeters. The Gigabyte Gaming OC is 34 centimeters long and the ROG Strix card is the longest of them all, standing at almost 36 centimeters. So again, make sure you check the specs of your case or just grab a measuring tape to make sure that these cards will fit. The weight is usually an indicator for build quality and here the ROG card stands out at 2.5 kilos followed by the MSI Supreme then the Founders Edition with the Gaming OC from Gigabyte being the lightest of them all. The MSI Supreme Liquid is the odd one out since it is water-cooled. Uh, the card itself is smaller and lighter but you have a 240 millimeter radiator to put somewhere so you will need to make sure you have a case that fits it as well. I personally prefer the big air-cooled cards uh, but liquid-cooled cards also have their own upsides like getting all that GPU heat out of your case instantly and relying less on the airflow of your case so that is definitely something to think about. In terms of design, the Founders Edition is basically an extra large version of earlier FE cards, while the MSI, Gigabyte and Asus are the more typical 3-fan models. I don't think any of them look bad, uh, they are quite different which is great because picking a design is a very subjective thing. Gigabyte tries to catch your eye with the RGB LEDs inside the actual fans, MSI is trying to go for a little bit more of a professional and elegant look with their Supreme lineup and Asus went for something a little bit more aggressive looking while taking risks with the new blue and red color scheme. They all offer some form of LED lighting but the Founders Edition and the more elegant MSI cards do it a bit less while the Gigabyte Gaming OC and the ROG Strix added a bit more RGB. They all have fantastic looking backplates though which is pretty much the only thing you will see in the most typical builds out there and they're all built really well so any of these cards will be a good choice design wise. The core of these cards is exactly the same so they use the same chip, they have the same 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory and so on but there are actually some minor differences in other features they offer so all four partner cards will get you a dual BIOS option which basically gives you another performance profile but I will talk about those later. Uh, the air-cooled Gigabyte MSI and ASUS will also come with the GPU holder to prevent your GPU from sagging and putting a lot of pressure on the PCIe slot. And while the rest of the cards have three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 port, the ROG Strix card is the only one that offers a second HDMI 2.1 port and two fan headers, so that might be important to some of you. One extra feature to consider is that Gigabyte is offering a fourth year of warranty if you register your card after you buy it and I think that that is such a good extra for a product that costs so much to begin with and it's such a big investment especially uh, with the current adapter issues and speaking of the price 
It is really hard to put it in perspective right now, given that the current supply is very low and the pricing is yet again all over the place. But looking at initial pricing or what the prices are supposed to be, the Founders Edition should be the cheapest MSRP model, closely followed by the Gigabyte Gaming OC. The Supreme X should cost a little bit more than that, and the Supreme Liquid and ROG Strix cards should be the most expensive of the bunch. But let's talk performance. The RTX 4090 base spec is 2.52 GHz, but thanks to NVIDIA's boost feature, every card boosts much higher than that, and you can also see the results for both BIOS options of the cards that offer that feature. Still, there is a small clock speed improvement with partner cards, even on their quiet or silent BIOS profiles, and this will always vary per sample, but out of these five that I have tested, the Air-Cooled Supreme X boosts the highest. No card has its memory overclocked out of the factory, but you can do that yourself if you like. And what all this means is that you're looking at about 1-3% to of a performance difference in game between the slowest and the fastest options I have here. And that is not something you will ever notice while playing a game. But you will notice the difference in thermal performance and you will notice the difference in noise. Now the bigger air-cooled cards generally show somewhat improved core thermals over the Founders Edition, with the Supreme Liquid giving the best result of them all. But all these cards are overbuilt, and even the 65 degrees on the FE or the 69 degrees on the Supreme X in the silent profile is way below the limits for this chip. Hotspot temperatures show a similar picture, but the memory temps are a bit different. The ROG Strix Gaming OC and the Air-Cooled Supreme X in the faster BIOS showed a better result here than the FE and the Supreme Liquid. But again, memory can run a bit warmer and it is completely fine as long as it's not in the high 90s or above. Now, when it comes to noise, the ROG Strix and the Supreme Liquid are the quietest options, followed by the Air-Cooled Supreme X in its silent BIOS and the Gaming OC in the silent BIOS as well. But while these differences seem small, they're actually pretty relevant in reality. Uh, 42 decibels isn't very loud for a high-end GPU, but the difference between a 40 decibel card that is on your desk right next to you and a 42 decibel card is very much noticeable. And if we put these noise and thermal results together, we do get a clearer picture of relative performance. The ROG Strix sets a good baseline with very good thermals and very low noise levels. The MSI Supreme X is pretty much the same when it comes to thermals in its faster BIOS, but then with a higher fan speed. And in the silent BIOS, the temperature goes up and the fan speed goes down. The Gigabyte Gaming OC performs well with, again, more noise, but I think the primary profile is too loud, and in my opinion, the silent profile is more balanced while still offering an improvement over the Founders Edition. And the Watercooled Supreme shows the best core and hotspot temperatures while being close to as quiet as the ROG card. So it looks very efficient, but it does have those higher memory temperatures that you do need to consider. When it comes to power, all these cards have a TDP of 450 watts, and they were pulling between 425 and 450 watts, depending on the profile, which means that you will be fine if you already have an 850 watt high quality power supply. But if you're getting a new power supply, I would go for at least uh, 1000 watts or more, especially if you want to pair it with the new high performance CPUs. And speaking of power, I have to touch on the current issue with the NVIDIA adapter. Now, as you all know, all these cards use the new 16-pin 12-volt high-power connector, and they all come with an adapter that is provided by NVIDIA that connects to four 8-pin cables from your power supply. And there have been a few cases of these adapters melting. Now, it does not happen to everyone. There have been a handful of reports compared to thousands of 4090s sold around the world, but there is definitely something going on. And when you have a car that you spent so much money on, it is so difficult to take any chances with it. It was mostly the NVIDIA adapter that seems to be the issue, not the card itself. And if you do decide to buy any of these GPUs, I just strongly recommend getting a proper cable from your power supply manufacturer or something like 
cable mod. I am personally using the cable that Sezonic provides for anyone that bought a new GPU and you can ask for it for free, but other power supply manufacturers are offering the same thing. So make sure you try to get one instead of using the provided adapter. I think that the Founders Edition already performs so well and paying a big premium for any other card is just not easy to justify. So the FE should probably be the first card to look at. But I also suspect that the FE will not be easy or it will be impossible to find. So if you decide to go for a partner card instead, I think that the gaming OC from Gigabyte should be the next logical step. It should only cost you slightly above the MSRP, in theory, and it makes a lot of sense, especially with that extra year of warranty. The other option would be the Aircooled Supreme X with its slightly higher overclock and well-balanced performance profile. The super high-end ROG Strix and the Supreme Liquid X are definitely quiet and very good to look at if you just want a super quiet card, but they're also so expensive in a lot of regions. And even if you don't have to worry about money, you should really think about if it's worth paying that much more for a card that performs the same, but it's only slightly quieter. So if you decided to go for a 4090 and you didn't know what to choose, I hope this video was helpful a bit. And if you don't want to pull the trigger just yet, maybe you should wait for mid-December to see the performance and availability of the new AMD cards because on paper they do seem very promising. Or at least uh, wait and see what the new RTX 4080 is all about. Now that's it for today. Uh, thank you all for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!